So your partner has just left you, presumably just to go and visit relatives on land and not because you've had some kind of bust up, but you find yourself on the boat on your own. So what do you do? A, go into a marina and tie up and just get drunk down the bar every night. B, you find a nice quiet little anchorage and you just hide away from everyone. Or C, you go off solo sailing and have one of the best times of your life and I am here to tell you why you should go solo sailing. This is an extra outside of our weekly vlog, which comes out every Thursday. With these question and answers, we try and answer one of your questions in front of the camera. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. Normally we're going to, we'd try and do two a week. Unfortunately, we're only going to have time to do one question this week because I've got to get my visa sorted. So we just don't have time for it, but let's tuck into this one. A couple of weeks ago I did a quick live broadcast on Facebook and it was just me weighing anchor from one anchorage to the other and we had quite a few questions that came through. There was one in particular from Phyllis Stacy who asked how safe it is to sail on your own and someone else, and my apologies I can't remember who it was, asked what's it like anchoring on your own. So I thought I'd come up with five reasons why you should go solo sailing. So when we first moved on to Esper all those years ago I had never owned a boat before, much less actually skippered one. It was a very steep learning curve. I remember two years in, Liz had to return to the UK for the summer and so I was on my own for two or three months. There was no way I was going to sit around on my own, although it could have been quite easy since the marina there was very comfortable. But a solo sailor friend of mine, a tough Kiwi called John, was telling me about his plan to sail the Dodecanese on his own and asked me if I wanted to come along. So I figured, well, why not? It's gonna be good practice. On the very first day, I made a grave error with my anchoring technique and ended up dragging in the middle of the night and dragged onto another boat and smashed the solar panel. So I was completely horrified. I was this close to turning around and going back to the marina and tying the lines and waiting for Liz to return, but I didn't. I actually made the point of pushing myself and continuing on that journey, which eventually was a really, really good fun two months in which I learned loads. So here are my five reasons that motivate me to go solo sailing. People have been doing it for millennia, from fishermen in dugout canoes to the earliest sailors. People have been sailing on their own on the high seas for a very, very long time. Now think of the first person who sailed around the world solo, Joshua Slocum. He did that back in 1895. Fast forward to the 21st century and you have people like Ellen MacArthur and Dee Caffrey who have been breaking records on their own at pretty young ages as well. Ellen MacArthur is my personal hero. I read her book, Taking on the World, when I was crossing the Bay of Biscay for the first time. And I, of course, was terrified. It was very early on in my sailing career and I didn't know what to expect. And I'd heard lots of nasty horror stories about the Bay of Biscay. On my way over, I read Ellen MacArthur's book. It helps put in context the trials and the challenges that this young woman went through and to put it into context of what I was doing which was sailing with three other people with a very knowledgeable skipper suddenly you realize that what you're doing compared to what she did is nothing really and look at Dee Caffrey she has sailed around the world the wrong way round and she did that in her 30s She's sailed around the world about five times now on her own. So talking about these great sailing heroes brings me on to the second point. If they can do it, why can't I? And this is something that I've always used as a motivation to do pretty much anything. When you take on a new challenge, something that isn't familiar to you, there could be a very steep learning curve, then think of all the people out there that have already done it. They're no different to you. Third reason is because your boat can do it. Your boat can handle it. Going back to Joshua Slocum, 1895, he sailed around the world. He didn't even take a chronometer to work out where he was. He simply used dead reckoning. And of course his boat was nothing compared to what we are sailing now. The technical advances we've had in the last 150 years are phenomenal. With all this technology at hand, there is no reason why your boat can't manage to do a bit of solo sailing with you at the helm. The fourth reason is that it challenges you. It challenges you both physically and mentally. It can be quite exhausting, but it's also about pushing you, pushing you to your limit to see what you're actually capable of doing. And you'd be surprised I think it's important to have independence, time alone and time to reflect, to just be with yourself 
it's very cathartic and it's good for your well-being, your mental well-being. Even after sailing through a dead calm sea, when you drop the hook on your own, there is a sense of achievement. And finally, the fifth reason for going solo sailing is because you get the whole bed to yourself. Sailing is, of course, about adventure and more importantly, it's about that freedom. And when you're sailing with someone else, a partner or a family, that freedom is compromised to some extent. So there's nothing like being able to get up when you want, cook when you want, go sailing when you want, to have that complete freedom. It's one step beyond sailing with other people on a boat. To be sailing on a boat on your own is complete freedom. It's just nice to have that break and we all need it sometimes. But if I'm honest, of course, sailing for me is all about sailing with Liz and Millie aboard Esper. So I don't necessarily choose to go solo sailing, but I found myself in situations where I've almost had to. The trick is just to embrace it, to say, yeah, come on, let's just see it as a challenge to be positive about it. So what do you think? Let's hand it over to you. Put your comments below, let us know. Could you rise to the challenge? What do you reckon? We're after your questions as well. So if it's a good enough question, then perhaps we might answer it to camera. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And when you do, click that little bell so you get a notification when the next episode and when the next Q&A comes out. And also when eventually we start live streaming as well. Thanks for watching. Peace and fair winds.